Good evening and welcome back everyone. Storm tracker Jordan Wilkerson here with a look at your forecast. 46 degrees right now in the tri city so still pretty mild, but things are about to change. And an air stagnation advisory that I mentioned yesterday morning in Yakima has actually been extended. It was supposed to end today, but now it looks like it'll be extended into Tuesday. Um, so just be aware of that if you're going to be outside and you do have respiratory issues. Please tell me we've got more good stuff like this on the way. Yes, and you're right though. We did break records today. Well, at least in Yakima, we were pretty warm in the Tri-Cities as well. Above normal temperatures, those will continue throughout the weekend and definitely into the work week. So good news there for you, Francis. Light winds will also continue as high pressure begins to build over our area. So we've been wanting it for quite some time now. We were dealing with those dreary days and it looks like this week coming up is going to be a great one. I'll let you know how great coming up in your full storm tracker forecast. Francis, back to you. And although those winds are light right now, they will start to pick up as the evening progresses and we'll talk more about that. And over the past 12 hours, it does look like you can see the disturbances wanting to make its way to our region. However, it doesn't look like it'll be reaching us at least not until Monday night. We've been dealing with that high pressure just sticking those low clouds to us and that's going to continue, like I said, at least through Sunday. And all right, so overnight tonight, you can see we're definitely not as cold as we were last weekend. So upper 20s to the lower 30s for the Yakima Valley and the daytime highs tomorrow, upper 40s to the lower 50s. So a lot more mild. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. I know I will. Jordan, again, beautiful temperatures, almost a summer like tone to the way the sun was shining. But again, February, <laughs> so come on, we can't be How this lucky. How long will it last, right? right well, right. it's actually looking like it's going to be lasting at least through the week as high pressure continues to dominate our forecast. So keep those sunglasses handy because it looks like the sun will keep on a shining and uh, not much of a change here due to that high pressure. I'll let you know if we can expect a change coming up this week in your full storm tracker forecast. Francis, back to you. Good evening and welcome back everyone. Storm tracker Jordan Wilkerson in for Mike McCabe tonight. If you just joined us, here's a quick look at those weather headlines so you know what we're getting into this weekend. That high pressure that we've been dealing with for quite some time, it's continuing and it looks like it will do so at least through the weekend. We can expect light winds, mild temperatures, but what about the elephant in the room? Super Bowl forecast. Let's get right to it. So by 3.30 p.m. for kickoff in Glendale, Arizona, 66 degrees, mostly clear with light winds, really nice over there. Whereas here we're looking at lower 40s with about a 30% chance of rain. But otherwise, we will be having a great time indoors rooting for our Seahawks. Go Hawks. All right, current conditions right now, 39 degrees in the Tri-Cities. We still have that cloud cover, a little uh, west wind, six miles an hour there, and that wind will continue to stay light as well. But over the past 12 hours, about over the past week and even longer, it seems like we've been dealing with that high pressure just sticking those low clouds to us. And that's going to continue, like I said, at least through Sunday. And that's when uh, some changes will happen. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But you can see rainfall future cast validates that we will be clear in terms of precipitation through uh, at least that Sunday. So tomorrow high pressure remains intact here. We will have seasonable temperatures as that uh, jet stream has that ridge and really just keeping us uh, dry, but still with those clouds. And you can see in the wind tracker forecast, calm tonight through Monday. That's going to be the name of the game in terms of our winds, calm and light. All right, day planner for tomorrow will be at 35 degrees by 9 a.m., lower 40s by noon as well as by 5 p.m. So we'll actually hit our high around two or three uh, of the mid 40s and starts to go down from there. And it looks like we may see some sun breaks tomorrow. I've got my fingers crossed. Road trip forecast, Seattle will be at 50 degrees tomorrow is the high, 53 in Portland, 52 in Ocean Shore, so really nice and mild in all of those areas. A little bit more sun in the Seattle region, but 38 degrees in Spokane, so definitely cooler there, but actually more sun for them. And right now the passes are looking clear, so if you do have the travel plans uh, and you're heading out the door, uh, things are looking good right now, no restrictions currently in the major passes. But Overnight tonight, we will still see that cloud cover. We actually may have some freezing fog overnight, but upper 20s to the lower 30s, and we may start tomorrow with some patchy fog. We'll be in the mid 40s for our daytime highs tomorrow. So still really nice in terms of temperature and hopefully those sun breaks, but you can see 46 for uh, the airport in Pasco is the prediction for tomorrow as the high 41 for our Sunday. And that's when low pressure starts to move in and actually give us a chance for some showers. And now if you don't really want the showers, this is actually a good thing because that will start to move. Yes, that high pressure, uh, those low clouds out of the way. So Sunday, Monday, we'll see the rain chance. Tuesday, a little bit dreary, but Wednesday, I think things are going to shape up. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. All right. I'm at Bill's 
berry farm. Oh, it almost went in. And I'm playing in one of the activities that you can do here during their Apple and Pumpkin Festival. I'm with the Atomic City Roller Girls practicing for their next bout on August 30th. I'll show you some moves still to come on Action News. Seven points! So this is Danny. Come on out, Danny. Oh yeah, looking good. <laughs> How are you doing today? Great. Oh, you look great too. We're talking about gun safety today. We're also going to preview a class that's coming up in August. I'm going to go ahead and give it a whirl. We are getting ready for the Pirate Plunder Adventure Race. That's coming up this weekend. I'm going to get ready to go on this slide. That's what it comes. All right, you go! Sizzle, sizzle. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I am at Value Village in Kennewick. We are talking about Halloween costumes on a budget. <laughs> You're so funny. Good morning, everyone. I'm at Amy's Bridal, and we did not want to leave the men out of this. Hey, Amy! <laughs> That's still to come on Action News. These finalists are going to move on to the Central Washington Home and Garden Show. This is obstacle number nine out of 16, the over under. I'm only doing the overs because I do have a mic pack on. Don't want to get that wet, but you can see you pretty much just zigzag through here, over under. This is not easy. I'll tell you, this is like the coolest thing I can do. Francis, you should be proud of me. I'm at Red Dot Paintball in Horn Rapids inside the castle field, getting ready to face my attackers. Come on. I'm at the Southridge Sports and Events Complex, and we are getting ready to play some pickleball. I'm doing a little warm-up routine. Tell me some cool moves. We're actually going to go back and forth here and do a little trick off. All right, here so we go. Say, Around okay. the back. Uh, off oh. the knee. Hopefully I can. There you go. We are going to take you through the soap making class. I'm just finishing up my lime and cedarwood soap, and hopefully it'll turn out like this one. But that's still to come on Action News. Good morning, everyone. I'm at Locally Curated in Kennewick, and we are talking about the upcoming beginner's soap making class. And Rachel here is going to be teaching it. She also sells these soaps here at Locally Curated. So we've got our safety gear on because I'm about to pour something. But before we get to that, what were you just doing in there? These are my pre-mixed oils. So I had already weighed them out and everything. Um, it's a combination. This recipe uses olive oil and apricot oil and some shea butter mm. and coconut oil all mixed together so you can get a nice lather. Um, and so then for the soap, to make soap, you mix oils in with, which is your fats, in okay. with lye or sodium hydroxide. Okay. And sodium hydroxide is an exothermic reaction, which means it's hot. But right now we've already cooled it down. So she's going to go ahead and mix it in. All right. You said it gets up to 180 degrees just by yep, mixing the lye with water. Yeah. Crazy. And then we'll go ahead and stir these together. Okay. And you'll see after a couple of minutes that the soap will will start to thicken as those molecules come together yeah. and start to make soap. Okay, At the end I of soap, there's no there's no lye left. So oh, can I try that? Yeah. So yeah. they'll be able to do this in the class. So what do I press yep, here? Exactly. Just that button in the yep. front. And you want to hold it straight down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's fun. And you said the class lasts about two hours. Yep. Exactly. Two hours. It's almost almost on the dot each time. Oh yeah. You can go see over. it thickening up too. That's really yep. cool. All right. Well, don't forget to sign up. You can call or go to her website. Oh gosh, I'm gonna let her just take that away. We'll have more on the soap here coming up next. Back to you.